we know the basic difference between the open loop system and closed loop system. If you look at the block diagrams of open loop and closed loop, from the first in, it, instant itself, we can say that uh, the difference is the feedback. In open loop system, the feedback is missing. In closed loop system, there exists a feedback. Now, we will see what are the effects of feedback in control systems. Now, so this open loop system is also called non-feedback system and this closed loop system is now it is a feedback system. So let us look at what are the effects. Now I just want to concentrate the effect of feedback on these parameters. The first one is the gain and second is a pole location and time constant and third is impulse response of the system and then on bandwidth and then on the sensitivity of the system which is very important in the control system and also we will see what is the effect of feedback and noise or disturbance on the system so not only this uh, what will be the effect of positive feedback which is also called regenerative feedback on the system now let us start with the effect of gain on control system so we'll try to look at what is the open loop transfer function and open loop block diagram the open loop block diagram is going like this so i have a block inside the gain g and there is input connected and you have the output so this is usually called the open loop system but what is open loop control system when i say open loop control system the controller is also part of my system then look at here so this is a controller and after that we have system and input is given to this controller and output we are taking for the plant or the system so for analysis purpose what we can do is we can see uh, we can combine these two these two blocks and make it a single block g which is my open loop block now what is the transfer function of open loop system now it is only simply g what will be the gain of it the gain is nothing but g now what is the closed loop or what is the feedback system so for the feedback system you can see here this is g and this is h and we have a negative feedback all the effects are a negative feedback effects which we are going to see so input is r of s and output is c of s what i need to do is i need to find what will be the closed loop transfer function of the system what will be the net gain of the system which we are we want to know so which we know that then i can compare with the non feedback system like i can make one statement right so how to do that let us take uh, uh, intermediate uh, signals in this block diagram the first signal which I am taking after summing point which is E and after this feedback H I am taking it as a B then we can write very easily what is the output C C is nothing but E into G then uh, what will be the uh, C again what you know what is E E is nothing but your R minus B or R minus H into C then we can substitute here then we can find out the relation uh, C into so 1 plus G H is equal to R G I can find out the transfer function C of S by R of S or simply C by R as G by 1 plus G H so G by 1 plus G H is the transfer function of closed loop system or the gain of the closed loop system now what will be the open loop so open loop is non feedback for non feedback the gain is G for feedback system the gain is G by 1 plus G H which means uh, for feedback system the gain is reduced by the factor 1 plus gh so whenever you close the loop the gain reduces so which which is the result of the feedback and non feedback system then you take the second uh, the effect of feedback on location of pole or time constant of the system now let us take again non feedback system which is open loop uh, i am taking this is g and input and output which are there I am just going to look at the dynamics of it. For example, if I uh, take the G of S as, for example, a K divided by 1 plus S T naught. So, T naught is the time constant of my open loop system and G, K is the gain of the open loop system. Now, what is the time constant of this? Simply T naught. Right. So, when you look at the closed loop and assume my uh, feedback is unity, H is unity then you know what will be the closed loop transfer function c of s by r of s which is g by 1 plus g h then take g as it is k by 1 plus s t naught all divided by 1 plus again g is k by 1 plus s t naught h is 1 so the, the result is going to be your c of s by r of s gives us we have k by 
1 plus k and the denominator we can write it as 1 plus s into t naught by 1 plus k. So what is the time constant? The coefficient of the term s is a time constant. Then what is the coefficient of s here which is t naught by 1 plus k. So t naught by 1 plus k is a time constant. For non-feedback system it is only t naught. Then what will be the result? Then I can say that the time constant of closed loop system is reduced by the factor 1 plus k. So again we will see that means for non-feedback to feedback we have uh, a decrease in the a time constant of the system we know time constant is very important uh, parameter in any system which will give us how fast your system is reaching to the steady state value now we can look at what is the pole pole locations the pole location of open loop is very clear because t naught is my time constant my open loop pole is minus 1 by t naught then what will be the closed loop pole time cons uh, uh, pole uh, from the time constant of the closed loop system we can write it as uh, let us say tc is my uh, pole then that is uh, sc is, uh, s is equal to we have the location at uh, minus 1 plus k by t naught now let us see uh, an s plane let us say this is my s plane we know s plane is a complex plane where we can locate poles and zeros of the system now i have open loop pole and closed loop pole let us locate them so first look at what is the open loop pole open loop pole is minus 1 by t naught so i'm just locating here it is minus 1 by t naught then i want to locate uh, the another pole close loop pole which is minus 1 plus k by t naught so that will be here so what does it mean so my open loop pole is nearer to the imaginary my closed loop pole is going away from the imaginary so whenever you have a feedback system whether it is a unity feedback or or if you have any other feedback then you will have always a closed loop pole which is away from the imaginary which is again away from the open loop pole so this way i can say the time constant as well as the uh, pole locations of my uh, feedback system when compared to non-feedback system then we'll see what is the effect of impulse response of the system so what is impulse response so impulse uh, we know it is like infinite pulse so the impulse is like a spike which we have like this now so what is the uh, laplace equivalent of impulse laplace equivalent of impulse is one which means the input which we are giving is one and we need to look at what is the output of the system uh, we can directly say output is c of s then you apply the inverse laplace transform to that you will be getting uh, the impulse response of the system now let us take the non feedback system which is the open loop feedback open loop system so in the open loop system what is the uh, transfer function your transfer function g of s is we already seen it is k by 1 plus s a t naught then if you rearrange in the form uh, numerator i can write it as uh, k by t naught uh, divided by you can write it s plus uh, we have k by t naught so whenever you have k by s plus a the inverse laplace is going to be k in t power minus a t then when you apply inverse laplace here directly we are directly applying inverse laplace because the impulse input is equal to 1 in laplace domain so what will be the uh, c of t the c of t is going to be k by t naught is a constant you are getting then e power minus uh, t small t is a time parameter and uh, you have a so a is nothing but your k by uh, t naught so k by t naught into e power minus k by t naught into 2 which is the response of the system and it is very clear the starting point is k by t naught and it is exponentially decreasing as the time is increasing similarly for a closed loop system we know for closed loop system c of s by r of s we can find the transfer function where g is my k by 1 plus s tau then uh, if you do this and uh, we will be getting it as anyway r of s is equal 1 for impulse then your c of s first of all we write the c of s as we have k by t naught uh, over we have s plus 1 plus k by t naught so 1 plus k by t naught is a and k by t naught is k again whenever you have k by s plus the inverse laplace transform is k into e power minus a t then what will be the impulse response for closed loop system or feedback system the impulse response is going to be your c of uh, s is k by t naught and e power minus t small t into 1 plus k by t naught then if you look at the impulse responses of these two 
uh, I am just taking the plot here. This is x axis as a t is increasing from 0 to infinity. What will be my uh, c of t, the response of the system? In this case, it is impulse response. Now, so in both cases, uh, the starting point is same, means my open loop response is also starting here and closed loop response is also starting here which is k by t naught. But uh, they are reaching to 0 as t tends to infinity, e power term going to 0, so both are going to 0, but in between how they behave is the most important thing. Now uh, open loop uh, we have like this and closed loop we have like this, which means my open loop system is slowly going to zero and whereas my closed loop system is taking very less time to uh, to reach the steady state value. What I can say here is from these two graphs, the closed loop system which is a feedback system always faster than the non-feedback system that is your open loop system. Now if you look at the block diagram, so this is a plant, now this is the controller. Now I am not showing any uh, final control element, assume the final control element controllers uh, or actuator and everything will be in this black called controller. So this is a plant to be controller, the other name for plant is a process or system. We can have a different names to this, this is to be controlled. Now uh, what I said in closed loop there is a feedback, now what I need to do there is an output the name of the output generally we call C of S. The C of S is the controlled variable or the controlled output. There is a one variable which we are interested to control that is the controlled variable. So we can also call it as the actual response of the system or actual output of the system. This is my C of S. Now you need to have a method, you need to have a device to measure the this particular output. So I am using the sensor. So this sensor is going to measure it and it is going to give the what is the actual output and feeding to the uh, this particular block which is called the summing point. What is input to the summing point is my reference, right. So we have different names here, this can be called as a reference input or simply input or we can also call it as a set point or sometimes it is called desired response, also sometimes we call it the command signal. These are different names we use and we use R of S is a variable, it is a reference variable. Now, so we are measuring using the sensor and feeding back here and what type of feedback it is a negative feedback because the whole and sole purpose of my feedback is to get the deviation of output from the input which is the error. Therefore, if I use the negative feedback then I would get that error. Now depending upon the error, my controller will take some action. It, it gives us the controller output and it is going to change one of the manipulated variable of the plant that, that is why the output we can call it as a manipulated variable, manipulated input to the system and of course the system is subjected with the disturbances. We can have any kind of disturbances in the system. Sometimes there will be some uh, sensor noise also we can introduce into that. Uh, sometimes the plant itself has some modeling uh, noise or modeling error. So all in the presence of all these things, the external disturbance, the internal disturbance of the plant and also uh, you have any noise that is entered into the your sensor, all these uh, all these things uh, we are taking into consideration in closed loop system, we design the controller. Right, we'll look at some of the examples of closed loop control systems. So we can have the bread toast of the human interference and the human driving the car or automatic temperature control system, a liquid level control or missile launching and guidance systems and the position control systems and many more examples you can say. Now, so as a control engineer, how do I proceed when you are going to uh, design a control system, how do I proceed? So essentially there are four parts in control system, we can say that the four components of the control system. So when you look at the closed loop block diagram, this is a closed loop diagram which was shown. Now the first step in control system is uh, model the plant. We have the plant or a process or a system which is available to me. Look into the system, see how the components are connected and what are the governing equations we have. So based on that model the plant. 
So not on the plant. Generally, we are going to look at other components of the system. Like if you have any final control element, we need to have the model to that. If you have a sensor, we need to have the model to that. So you model all the components which are there in the loop. That is called the modeling. The very first part of the or first component of the control system. So once the modeling is over, then find the stability of the system. The stability of the system. Whether the system is stable or not. If it is unstable, then uh, we need to look at how to make the system stable. So if it is stable, then we go to the next step. So what is the next component analysis? We do the analysis. Generally, we do time response analysis and frequency response analysis. Essentially, in this particular analysis, we look at some of the performance indices. What are the performance specifications of the system? So see that whether your system is giving uh, you know, very good uh, performance specifications or the desired performance specifications or not. So you have, you find out those uh, specifications with you. That is your analysis. Then finally coming to the design. So depending upon the stability of the system, depending upon the analysis of the system, then I am going to uh, design the controller or compensator to my system so that ultimately the objective of the control system should be satisfied and that in a simple sentence I can say my output of the system should reach the input within a shorter time or output should be equal to input or the desired response should follow the uh, uh, your actual response should follow the desired response.